What's up, YouTube? <clears throat> this is Scott Seuss. We are back with a different type of video. Today, we're going to discuss something I like to discuss weather. Am I getting old? I don't know. But I've always liked the weather, the phenomenon, especially tornadoes, hurricanes, the brain tornadoes. Always love it anyways. So, we have a pretty severe setup here in uh, northern Florida. Um, all the way from basically Mobile all the way over to Panama City, going to Tallahassee. And then I don't really care about the other areas and the enhanced risk, but Southern Alabama all the way up to Birmingham, and then Georgia almost to Atlanta, and then over into the Savannah area. Those are for enhanced risk. There's um, a slight marginal risk around that, which I don't think you're gonna to get too much except for later today in the afternoon could be a possibility however next week on the 27th we will be having a possible tunnel outbreak which if y'all are watching weather watchers then y'all will remember this is the april 27th it's the 10 year anniversary of the super tornado outbreak i hope that you guys are prepared let's talk about this day one outlook okay so day one connective outlook um there is an enhanced risk for severe thunderstorms as i said from southern Alabama and all the way down to Florida Pandal, east to Georgia and southern South Carolina coast. The summary basically is the boil down is going to be scattered severe thunderstorms are expected on Saturday across parts of the southeast. All severe hazards are, are active people. So we're going to have very large hail or large to very large hail. We're going to have damaging wind and tornadoes and a lot of northern Florida you're already suffered damage two weeks ago so those areas that suffered damage two weeks ago are even more prone to more damage and then with wind damage you're going to suffer a lot more when you have uh, ground saturation which is what we'll have we'll have two three inches of rain minimum seems like not a lot but it's a lot trust me um as y'all know, should know two inches can flood a whole street and you can drown in one tablespoon of water so anyways, um, basically a mid upper level short wave trough will continue moving eastward today, crossing the mid south and southeast before reaching the Atlantic coast at the end of the period. In the wake of this future low amplitude ridging will prevail ahead of the next trough, which will appear to the west coast later this week, which is something we don't talk about right now. But that's the one that's going to bring the new April 27th um, possible tornado outbreak. Okay, so uh, basically, I'm gonna keep it short from the lower Mississippi Valley all the way to the Gulf Coast states to the Eastern Carolinas. A complex scenario is evident today across the southeast as widespread ongoing convection uh, will lead to a local severe risk. We'll be underway at the start of the period, which is they just issued a tornado watch for southern Florida, or from southern Alabama and Florida, Panhandle, all the way to Okaloosa County. Um, I guess Bay County, Washington County will be next, and then it'll go on to Jackson, Calhoun, and all that stuff. Um, this is a serious situation. It's enhanced, which means it's it's gonna be definite. We are also in the, the enhanced area. It's also in the hatched area. When there's hatched areas, it means it's gonna be more severe typically. Um, the widespread, weaker stratiform precipitation to the north will continue to reinforce this boundary into the afternoon, likely allowing little northward retreat so the storm's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be cut off by the boundary up to the north. Um, the main corridor for severe potential will likely exist from southern Alabama and the Florida Pandal, eastward to the southern South Carolina, as repeated rounds of storms and clusters across this region. A very moist boundary layer will um, cause a convected boundary will contribute to moderate cape. It's a little bit the cape is a little bit stronger than moderate. Um, the cape's up there, and then um, it will definitely support organized rotating storms and a complex linear structures with an all hazard severe risk anticipated locally. So if you are in Florida, Mobile, Fort Walton Beach. Okaloosa, Tallahassee, anywhere in the Big Bend, if you're in Montgomery, Dothan, if you're in um, Troy, 
you know, if you're all the way up to literally Birmingham, Alabama, if you're in Georgia, and if you're from, I would say probably uh, Peachtree area down, Valdosta, and I think a little bit east of Valdosta will be this morning, about 8 a.m. is going to start firing up pretty good. Um, don't be surprised if you wake up to tornadoes today because it may be likely last weekend um, I, my siren went off and I got 17 no with the radios um, and they all went off at one time and my phone went off and I woke up and there was a tornado in my yard right over there it was rotating spinning it was not it was on the ground it destroyed some trees made me a little path back there which is nice but um, all it takes is one people I know a lot of y'all go to sleep and like, eh, I'm not worried about tornadoes. Fortunately for, for today's outbreak, it's going to be during the daylight versus the nocturnal tornadoes, which are scary. And you're not prepared for those typically because you are asleep because you have to work or you take care of your kids or get your kids to school. Um, with cam runs, continue to suggest that a rather well-organized Boeing cluster should move off you know, Georgia and South Carolina coast during this afternoon with low level flow veering in the wake of this initial cluster. Still a favorably strong deep layer flow behind this convection across the Gulf Coast states would support organized severe storms. The main question is whether and to what degree. That's always the question of all enhanced risk and all storm outbreaks. Um, the upper level jet's going to be there, the cape's going to be there. The moisture from the golf is going to be there. And the problem is, a lot of times, um, storms, when you have a linear convection system, you what you want as a tornado tracker, tornado hunter, tornado stucker, you're going to want little individual cells popping up everywhere. Those are the ones that make the super cells because it has to have the convection and the, all the ingredients of the atmosphere has to suck it all into the tornado. But when you have a big swath of storms that all form together, you're going to get maybe one or two spin-ups, real quick spin-ups, but it's not going to be as bad as inner separate little pockets because once you have separate pockets, it has more room to expand, to grow, to suck everything into it versus a, you know, a bow echo that bows out. It has just that's pretty much straight line winds, damaging wind gusts, etc. Um, I think a lot of you should pay more attention to the weather. Um, from Eastern Mississippi and Central Alabama, models continue to hint that destabilization will occur sufficient to support new storm development near the upper trough, but successive runs seem to be slightly less aggressive with this development still will maintain a slight risk across a portion of the area to reflect its potential. What they're saying, it was saying is um, after this first line crosses through, there will be more storms to pop up behind it. It has the potential for a slight risk for severe weather, but with where they continue to run the model runs like the HHRR or whatever, they're going to not be, they're not showing any aggression. Like aggression. Anyways, um, I'll try to update. Um, basically, we're looking at, like I said, Mobile to Tallahassee across the Gulf Coast, um, Pan Florida Panhandle, and then Birmingham down, and then basically Peachtree, Georgia to, to Savannah this way towards Panama City. Overnight, much of the more vigorous convection will have moved offshore. This is tomorrow night. Um, a few storms may also occur across southern Appalachia and into the Carolina vicinity through likely elevated atop a stable boundary layer and thus with only limited severe potential. So if you're in the Carolinas, you should be okay. Tomorrow, you know, shit happens, but you should be okay. I appreciate you guys watching and um, I know this video doesn't have graphs and all that stuff like most other storm chasers have, but um, this is my first video on the weather. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking about making it uh, a regular thing with all the weather outbreaks we keep having, I might as well. It's something I enjoy, and I hope that it's something that you guys learn to respect. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there, people.